Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to see how to authorize the API gateway. Suppose there are multiple APIs which are exposed via API gateway and then API gateway is calling different AWS services or any external service. If you need to validate the user, then we can do within the AWS service itself. For example, here we have Lambda 1 and Lambda 2. And if we need to authenticate the user, we can do it within the Lambda 1. And the same thing has to be done within Lambda 2 if that Lambda is also need to be validated. If we have to validate the user from the API Gateway's point of view, we can do it with the help of Authorizer. There are two types of Authorizer. One is the Cognito base and another one is the Lambda Authorizer. Cognito is a AWS user management service. Whenever any request is coming to the API Gateway, user will be validated within the Cognito pool. And the second approach is the Lambda Authorizer, where we can define one Lambda specific to the authentication. That Lambda will be doing the authentication based on different inputs, for example, the headers, that could be token or it could be any other header. And also there can be query parameters. So based on that information, Lambda Authorizer will validate the request. And once the user is validated, then API Gateway will call the specific service. In case the authentication is failing, then API Gateway will return from there itself and it will throw the 401 and 403 errors. We are going to see how we can define the Lambda Authorizer. Within the API Gateway, we have defined the customer API and from the Postman, if I will call this API, right now I am getting this response. So this is the Lambda response that I am getting and for this, I have defined one app Lambda this is just reading the request and based on that, it is returning the status code and the complete event in the body. And this Lambda we have added with our API gateway. So here we have the integration with the Lambda and that is the app Lambda. In this API, we have the header token and for this token, if the value is say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then it is a valid request. And if we are passing any other token value, then it should fail. At this moment, because we haven't added any authentication mechanism, so we are getting the successful response. Now we will add the authorizer. To add the authorizer here within the API, we have the authorizers. Within this authorizers, we can add the authorizer. If you click on this create new authorizer, here we have the two options. Number one is the Lambda and another one is the Cognito. In this video, we are going to look at the Lambda part. For the Cognito, we just need to provide the Cognito user pool URL and the token that we want to validate. For Lambda, we have two options. One, we can provide the token and another one is the request. We will go with the token first. Here, first of all, we need to provide the Lambda detail. In our case, we have defined one auth Lambda. So this is the Lambda that will be triggered when the authentication will be done. I'm going to add that Lambda within our Authorizer. So here I have the auth lambda. We can give the name of this authorizer. Here I have the token authorizer and I have selected the lambda and I have given the lambda name. Within this token, we can provide the header that we want to validate. So in our case, we have the token header. This header name can be any name that you want to define. For now, we have just added the token. In the token source, we will provide the token. And then we have the authorization caching. If it is enabled, once the token is validated, then for a specific interval, cached value will be used. For now, I'm not selecting this. That means every time whenever the API gateway will be called, this authorizer will be called all the time. Just create it. So here it is creating the role. And if you have already defined such roles, you can pass that role as well. This token authorizer is created. With the authorization, here we can add that particular resource. And now I'll go to the method request. Within this, we have the authorization as none, but we can add the authorizer. So here we have the AWS IAM role, and then we have this token authorizer that we just created. Here I need to deploy this API. Okay, so now you can see with the method request, we have the authorization as token authorizer. And now if I call this API, I'm getting the error, and the error is user is not authorized to access the resource with an explicit deny. This error is coming from the API gateway and API gateway is calling our Lambda authorizer, but from the Lambda authorizer, let's see what we are doing. Within the auth Lambda, I have just defined one response. This is the auth response and I'm returning that response over here. 
Looking at the response type, you can see here we have the principal ID, we have the policy document. So all of this information is based on the resource policy of the AWS account. So here for the resource policy, we have the structure. We have to define the version, which is the default version. And then the statement within this statement, we have a couple of things. First of all, we have the effect. It can have two values, allow or deny. If it is allow, that means this resource that we have defined over here is allowed to do this particular action. So this action is the execute API invoke. Here we just need to execute the API. For that, we have execute API invoke action. If you are passing this effect as deny, that means this API will not be allowed to do this particular action. This is the response that we need to return from our auth lambda. I have defined this structure over here. This is the auth response, which contains principal ID, policy document, and then the action. Here we have the action, which is the invoke action. And this is permission that we are giving to this resource whenever this lambda will be called. So we will get the ARN of the resource. That is the API gateway ID that we have over here. We have provided here the value as deny. That means whenever this lambda will be called, it will return the deny. That is why we are getting the error over here. Now, what we want is whenever we are getting this token and the value is 12345, then we should allow the API gateway to execute the lambda. Otherwise, it should be denied. So that thing we can do within our lambda authorizer. Here within the event, let's see what values we are getting. And for that, we will go to the CloudWatch management. And here we have the auth lambda. First time when we call this API, this particular lambda is triggered. So here we can see the log. Within the event, we are getting the token, which is the type. And this is the authorizer type. Then we have the method ARN. This is the ARN of the API gateway that we have defined, the customer API. And then the authorization token. So here you can see we have got the authorization token. This is the value that we have defined within the token resource. Here in the token source, we have provided the token and that token is having this value. So whenever the auth lambda will be called, AWS API gateway will pass on the request in this form. And here the header token will be converted into authorization token and then its value will be provided over here. So we have this authorization token and we need to validate its value. Within the auth lambda here, let token equals to event dot authorization token. And here we will validate if this token value is equals to one, two, three, four, five, then we need to return the allow. And in other case, we need to return deny. And this is the effect that we want to pass from here. So I will define it in a variable and let's use this effect over here. Now I'll deploy this. Let's call the API. I'll change this value to one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm able to get this response. That means API gateway has identified the value of the token. And based on that, it has decided whether we need to allow the API to be called or it should be denied based on this particular auth response. In case of token, we can only pass one header. But if we have a requirement wherein we might have multiple headers, or we have the query parameters based on those values, we need to validate our request. So for that purpose, we cannot use this token based validation. Here we can use the different Lambda authorizer. I can create one more authorizer. And here, let's say we want to validate header validator. Again, I'm selecting the Lambda. Auth Lambda is what we need to call. And then instead of this token, I can pass the request. And with this request, now I can pass as many headers or the query parameters or the stage variable context, etc. We can take the same header as token. I also want to pass the query string and the query string is the query string that we have within our API. Here we have the user name. So I'll pass that as the second input for our Lambda authorizer. I will create this. Now token authorizer and the header validator. We have two validators here with the resource. We can change the validator and here we had the token authorizer. I will change this to the header validator, but uh, you need to refresh this one. And here we have the header validator. Again, we just need to deploy the API. Our API is deployed.
earlier we were getting this input in our lambda now let's see what is the input here it says user is not authorized and i'll check the input that we are getting within our lambda in the event input we are getting lots of information we have the type as request that was the type of our authorizer and then we have method arn resource path then we have headers multi-value headers query string parameters and all of those stuff so in previous case we were just getting the token but here we are getting lots of information of the request if we have such kind of requirement wherein we have to validate based on different parameters then we can use the request type in the auth lambda instead of event dot authorization token i'll use the headers dot token rest of the thing will be same now let's see the api here we have the one two three four five for this one two three four five we should be expecting that it is a valid request and here we are getting the valid request now we should be able to validate the username as well and if we just look at the log here we are getting the query string parameters and all the query string parameters will be part of this query string parameters and this is what we can get over here let user request to event dot query string parameters dot user underscore name this is our user and here we can validate the other condition if we have the token as one two three four five or we have the username as pp in this case we will allow the request otherwise we will deny it and here we have the principal id we can change it to the user as well deploy it i'm passing the incorrect token it should fail and here the username is now pp and for this it should be okay and similarly if i just change it to five and change some invalid username then again it is going to give us the result based on this token now we have seen how we can pass the query parameter and the header in our auth lambda there is a possibility that from the lambda whenever we are validating a user then that user information has to be passed to the specific service that we are calling after the authentication so this is what we can pass based on the context information so here along with the policy response we can also pass the context information and that is what we can do within the context this context takes the key values so whatever key we want to pass for example here we have the user for that we can pass the value as the user value and similarly if we have other attributes as well for example if we have say email for now i'm just hard coding it from the auth lambda whatever information we are providing within the context that will be passed to the application that we are calling from the api gateway how can we pass that information so for that let's look at the api gateway mapping so here we have the context from any api gateway if we need to pass that information the information we can pass within the context attribute for the authorizers we have the specific value for example we have the context dot authorizer and from here we can have the claims we have the principal id and if we have the specific properties that we have defined within the context those we can pass as the context dot authorizer and then the name of the property for example if we have the context that contains the key num key and bool key then the value of the key would be context dot authorizer dot key so it will return the value that we have defined over here in our case we have defined the user and email so these two values we need to pass to our app lambda to pass this value in the api gateway we can change here within the resources in the integration request we can add the mapping template and instead of just passing through the request that we have got we are also adding couple of attribute in the request and for that we can add the mapping template here for the request type if we have the content type as application json then our template will be used otherwise it will use the default request pass through so now we just need to add here the response and the response that we want to send to our app lambda is we have the user information that we need to pass similarly we have the email also we want to pass the body that we have received in the request so here we have the body and this information we already have in the input object so here we can pass the input dot body now we need to set the value for user and email and this value we can get from the context like this 
here we will set the value for user and the email and for that we need to define the variable and this variable we can define like this here we have set and within this we will define the variable dollar user and the value that we want to set is from the context and the key would be user similarly we have to set the value for the email as well email and this value is coming from email and these two variables we will use over here so we have user and the email just save this template and now whenever api gateway will call this app lambda it will pass the user email and body body will be the input body and then user and email this is the information we are getting from the auth lambda we have to deploy it whatever input we are passing to our app lambda we are returning that in the form of event so we should be expecting the user and email within this response as well we have got this pp1 and pp email as the values from our auth lambda this is how we can pass the context information to the specific service that we are calling from the api gateway once it is authorized we have seen how we can pass the header how we can pass the query string as well so this is it from this video in the next video we will see how we can validate the request based on the request body so stay tuned and happy coding.